Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, August 31, 2023. Jamaica and Canada have signed a reciprocal recognition agreement that allows seafarers from both countries to legally work on ships sailing under the Jamaican and Canadian flags. The agreement was signed recently at the London headquarters of the International Maritime Organization, IMO. It was signed by Peter Brady, Director General of the Maritime Authority of Jamaica, and Joanna Manger, Director General of Marine Safety and Security at Transport Canada. Rear Admiral Brady tells JIS News that the agreement is a milestone for both countries' seafarers as well as their maritime and transport administrations. He points out that it increases opportunities and earning potential of seafarers trained and certified according to the Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping STCW Convention. The agreement also authorizes Jamaica to verify the quality of education at Canada's maritime training establishments and vice versa. The Director General of Marine Safety and Security at Transport Canada says it allows her country to provide more job opportunities and help its domestic partners who are looking for qualified seafarers interested in working or living in Canada. The government will be launching a rural water resilience program in September as it moves to ramp up rainwater harvesting activities where and when appropriate. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, made the announcement during a function at the Forestry Department on Tuesday. That program will be launched against the backdrop of the Prime Minister being able to table also our rainwater harvesting guidelines which will be gazetted and given to our planning agencies, the municipality and indeed NEPA, to ensure that where appropriate, it is installed in the most appropriate manner. Acknowledging that not every Jamaican will have the resources to address the need for rainwater harvesting, Minister Samuda says this is why the government intends to distribute and install water tanks in 50,000 households over the next two to three years. He says social assessments will take place to ensure that the tanks go to the families most in need. But we're not just going to drop off a tank at a, at a house. We will be training young men and women from the communities to do the installations. So a part of our program will engage through the Hope and Heart programs, young people at the constituency level and teach them basic plumbing. We'll teach them about rainwater harvesting. And we'll even start the process with the ones that excel to learn leak detection. Minister Samuda says government will also be providing the guttering and other infrastructure for these locations, which will be mapped and put into the municipal corporations and NWC databases so that they are clear on where storage is available. In the meantime, a rainwater harvesting system and upgraded irrigation system have been commissioned into service at the Forestry Department. The rainwater harvesting system, which will serve the Forestry Department's head office on Constant Spring Road, was procured and installed at a cost of $9.1 million. It has four components, namely a catchment area on the roof of the property, a conveyance system comprising gutters and pipes, a storage facility that is a bank of plastic tanks, and a distribution system using a pump. The system is aimed at increasing the overall climate and disaster resilience of the Forestry Department by creating options for water capture, storage, and use. The new and upgraded irrigation system, meanwhile, was installed at the Mount Airy Nursery at a cost of $3.4 million. It will be used for sewerage and irrigation of the central germination facility and nursery, which has been facing water use challenges. This investment in the irrigation system of over $3 million will also protect Water Commission, but it will also optimize our use of that resource and ensure that we are turning out the volume of plants that we need from our nursery. It is anticipated that with the new systems, the Forestry Department will increase its production of seedlings and restore seedling beds. The government is taking steps to improve commuting in the corporate area with a proposal to relocate more public passenger coaster buses into the Halfway Tree Transport Center. Chairman of the Transport Authority, Owen Ellington, says the proposal is to relocate buses that traverse the Constant Spring and Red Hills route. The Transport Authority met with stakeholders earlier this week to discuss the proposal. Some weeks ago, an effort was made to um, relocate some of the coaster buses that normally sit down and pick up passengers along the roadways in the live lanes to the transport centre. The assessment of that shows that it has been working pretty well and that there is um, capacity within the transport centre to accommodate more buses. 
Mr. Ellington was addressing Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House. He says the transport center will provide a more safe and efficient commuting experience. The general idea is to prevent um, buses and taxis from stopping in and blocking live lanes as they seek to put down and, and pick up passengers, as well as to prevent um, commuters from having to walk long distances and cross the street, um, oftentimes putting their safety at risk. Meanwhile, more public transport improvements for the halfway tree area will include the construction of additional taxi stands and the reconstruction of safety guardrails along the roadways for pedestrians. Education Minister Fable Williams is asserting that there are more available teachers for employment than the school system requires, as she addresses the impact of teacher resignations. During a press conference on Wednesday, the minister revealed that 854 teachers had left the public sector between January and September of this year. While this represents a 44% decline when compared to the same period in 2022, the minister acknowledged that this still poses a challenge for the sector. Ahead of the school year, um, obviously getting notice here um, a few days before school opens, uh, I can fully understand the uncertainty of our principals or boards across Jamaica, uh, but, but um, that is why at, at least two, three weeks ago, we published, we sent to our schools a number of different strategies for them to use to help with the recruitment process. According to Minister Williams, there are approximately 25,000 teachers in schools across the island and an available pool of almost 1,700 teachers to be employed. She outlined some of the strategies put in place for teacher recruitment. Boards were given pre-approval to make early recruitment decisions. Um, they were given approval to engage part-time teachers, to engage retired teachers, to engage pre-trained graduate teachers, to engage final year student teachers, um, to redeploy uh, uh, underutilized staff, to merge small classes, to use blocked timetable approach, to increase the use of information communication technology in the classroom. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.